with archaeology. So, right, so I'm just going to make sure that that's all okay. And I've got everything on charge. Um, right, just to make sure. Right, my charge is on. And I've got to make sure I've got my little laptop as well. My little type typey thing. One sec. Okay. Okay, so last week was a rather interesting one. And uh, these these um, following lines and uh, in in the um, in the ideas of Tim in gold, uh, the concept of space and the concept of tar space and landscape and the line. So last week we looked at, at the Roman road or uh, the roads that were utilized in the Roman era. We also looked at the um, sweet track near Glastonbury, and we also looked at the roundhouse. So last week was was on the edge of, uh, and it was it was introducing you all of you. And I do believe tonight that we have got everybody, which is absolutely brilliant. Richard's Richard's back from his uh, spell off. Mm -hmm. So we've got Roger, Bill, Peter, Stephen, me. So that's six of this week. So. A little bit of intro introduction on what we did last week. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put an image on straight away, and and immediately it will come clear the subject matter that we're doing this week. And if we go quickly to my screen, and I think if I set any homework last from last week, is there anyone got any? Anything that they want to say for this week? I think you might have something to say, Bill, or are you okay? Yeah, well, we were talking about construction of roundhouses. And it um, occurred to me if I was going to build a, a roundhouse type building, I wouldn't build the um, circular wall um, on which the slanting uh, truss, roof trusses would go, because that would have to be a substantial wall involved in a lot of labour. Why not um, construct or dig a few circular holes to the, to the diameter you want, compact it with stone and, and use that as the, um, the foundations? And then, well, like an, an Indian teepee, if you like, a wigwam sort of thing. The only constraint on that, of course, that it would limit headroom and floor area. So we'd have to make the uh, roof dresses quite long, but it would certainly be a simpler way of doing things. And maybe that's how they started before they got into this concept, if they ever did. Because those walls there, were they really like that originally? It's just our guess, isn't it? Well, the, the um, yeah, no, it, it is a guess. And, and, and uh, Bill, um, you, you've just put a big volume of material in my head that uh, one thing we're doing this week, we are looking at the archaeological evidence that has been found in Swiss lakes and obviously those, those that at, will attend my class tomorrow morning and those that have already looked at these structures that we're finding in Switzerland and basically they're they're not roundhouses in Switzerland they're in fact and this this is a point Bill and what we're going to do is Swiss, um, here we go, to show you this. Right. We've got lots of evidence for these buildings um, on, Swiss, uh, on lake beds in Switzerland. Uh, one thing that we were exploring yesterday was that initially these buildings were actually on dry land. Water level has risen. Um, and we had this. We had this quite a long debate because the class yesterday didn't finish until after 10, to be honest. And when we think about when they initially found these, they actually thought they, they were buildings within the lake. But then some smart Alex said, actually, the water levels <clears> risen <throat> since when these were constructed 4000 years ago, 5000 years ago, whenever they were constructed. They were still being constructed within uh, living memory and they're still being constructed today. So 
um, we 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 looked at um, we looked at what's missing in the archaeology, and what's missing in the archaeology um, is is a sense of reason. And the sense of reason is that is that you don't necessarily need to have buildings raised to um, protect yourself from animals or um, for defensive reasons. You can have them raised because the ground is damp. You can have them raised because you can insulate the buildings better. You can have them raised so that the animals can live underneath and all these different concepts. So that point being made, back to what you were talking about with the roundhouse, the, the easiest roundhouses ever are basically, and I think this was a concept you were talking about, Bill, was that you compacted holes into the ground, you had beams wedged into the ground, and you had an apex, and that's basically the structure. Right? Right. Where, it, where it says there, Carl, large timbers to make mainframe, those roof clusters should be extended further into the ground. That's the point I'm making, to make it a simpler arrangement. No, no act, actually, Bill, right? Actually, Bill, completely, 100%. Uh, what we what we excavated at the Atlantic Trade Estate in Barry was what you've just described. There there were there were um, there were slabs which were on a diagonal in the ground, and timbers were just thrust in onto those slabs yeah, um, yeah. from either side, creating an apex, and that was your building. Is exactly. the most mm. yeah? No, it's not exactly, Bill. Is that's the easiest way no. of constructing. Uh, yes, of course and, it is. And, and archaeologists, archaeologists overdo it. Um, now, the design of my roundhouse is actually raised off the ground, right? So there's a cavern, there's actually space underneath the building I'm constructing. So the building I'm constructing is based on a Swiss design, is also based on what we found in the archaeology. It's certainly not this, because this doesn't work. Um, and the, the, the beam, the beam the beams that we use, we use, and are actually quite long, but they are raised. But that that's that's my concept of building a roundhouse. But the traditional way of building a roundhouse, this to me is completely faulted and wrong. I do believe that. And you know, all, all these none of these designs, none of these designs look any good, except Bill. Um, if you extend those posts directly into the ground, um, Get rid, you don't even need that post hole in the middle, right? That works. That works. Funny Except enough, Carl, can I just make one comment? Oh, um, that, Bill, look there, bingo. Got yeah. it. Apparently, of all the um, remains found of roundhouses from the Iron Age, there's only about 4% show evidence of there being a centre pole supporting the roof. 4%. Actually, the, Most of them to, didn't yeah. have a centre pole. To, to be able to, well, um, there's no, yeah, there's, for me, um, from what I've seen, there is no centre pole. Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you need a centre pole, Bill? What's the point? Actually, a centre pole wastes space. And where do you put your fire then? No. You can't provided, put it in the, the roof trusses are anchored firmly at the top, and you have to make a special arrangement, a notch arrangement for that. That's all you need. That is all you need, yeah. That is all you need. Outside the braces really as well, yeah. And, I, and I actually, 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 Bill, another point. I know you and I have gone off on a tangent now, but there's another point. Um, I, I have I have seen several designs of people building roundhouses today, right? And uh, and what they do, um, they they have them raised on posts that uh, you know the, the sub posts that I've got are substantially strong. Um, and basically what they do, they say, I'll oh, put the roof level in, right? And then you, you have um, uh, you, you, you have various different layers and you have different insulation and you have a hole in the middle of the building that allows light in. And I'm thinking, well, why would you do that? Um, the, the design that I've got, you have a, a butyl liner for the roof and you have different layers, right? And you can have grass on the roof, right? You've got a butyl liner that's complete, right? If you have light, if you have light streaming in from the center, um, the space between the glass and the liner that you've actually used for the roof, that's where the water's going to come in. I just don't understand these designs. I just don't understand the logic of, 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 of having lights streaming in from the middle of the building. Don't make sense. Anyway, right, Pete, we, uh, Bill, Bill, I'm going to blame Pete. It's Pete's fault. Yeah. So, so what, what I want to do is I, I, was, I was today 
looking at the Nazca lines. And and is is that and I said at the beginning it was that sense of um it was the sense of the curved line being a straight line, right? Because if if anyone's if anyone's ever walked up a hill, some some smart Alex said to me the uh, uh, years and years ago. They said if you're ever walking up a hill, if you look down at the ground, it, it seems that if you're walking on the flat, it, it that's absolute nonsense. It never it never it never worked, right? But these Nazca lines uh, are created in such a way that you on the ground you can't exactly see the lines, right? Um, from from much of you know if you if you look sort of on on the flat plane and you say right. I can see those lines, but I can't really, I can't really make out what it is. And the point is, the point that I'm making is if you go from the outside and you follow this, you follow that outside line all the way in and it spirals and it goes all the way to the center. That's a line that, 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 that concept is a straight line, right? It, no, it looks curved, but that's a straight line, right? When you're looking down on the ground, it's a straight line. It's, it's that, it's that, um, it's that sense of a cat right so if you um if you put if if you put a cat on top of a persian rug right they're not really going to be able to understand the design when they're standing on it they can say oh my what is all these colors right but as a human being we can see what the designs are on a persian rug and this is the concept of the nazca lines and you and you notice the word they're called nazca lines why aren't they called nazca circles because the sense of the line is is what these what these lines are based upon, right? Now, one of, one of the one of the concepts, one of the things that we've found is that sense of walking walking along these lines in some kind of a ritual, and and there, there's many concepts um, about this that you might travel from a long distance. You might have a you might have a pot. Right, and you carry this pot to the centre of the Nazca lines, and you break it. Uh, there, there's there's other various different concepts like this. These the the, the Nazca lines themselves are um, are to be followed, are, are to are to be ritualistically followed. And I just wanted to look at a few images, and then I wanted to look at some of the information, and then I want to look at another set of lines. And we're very limited tonight because we've already done good 10 minutes i wanted to look also at the uffington horse and what the sense of looking at the uffington horse is like i don't know if any of you have been i, I know i think roger and maybe bill's been to the uffington horse with me yeah, when, you actually, yeah. when you go to the uffington horse bill it is the sense of the line you, you can't exactly see the uffington horse when you're on it you no know, you can't, just, you can't no, you're not. So, so what i'm trying to say about this concept of the line right is this is what this is about? It, it, it's about following something. Every everything everything is in a web. As we said when we started these the, these group of classes nine weeks ago, uh, everything everything is interconnected. Every in archaeology, everything's layers. That that sense of that Tim Ingold was saying with uh, Bruegel's harvester that um, you, you've got a multiple screen of evidence or, and things going on and the echoes associated with the past um the past never stands still and uh, one one point is this in the present there's a lot of evidence of what's going on unfortunately that evidence goes bit by bit so for example my, my life and my life itself I, i've got i've got stuff that i've collected over the years and then i think right i don't need this anymore and uh, <laughs> I get rid of it and um and i've been getting rid of more and more stuff which is great i'm not a hoarder used to be a bit of a hoarder but i'm not a hoarder anymore and so the picture of my life is becoming more and more reduced it's like everything in history um and in many ways these nazca lines themselves are being equally reduced um, in their ability to be understood, because if you if you look at this sort of nice sort of spiral, can you see that there's a big chunk of it on the left that's gone? And what we know what we know is that people uh, driving across these things that that's been damaged, that's been damaged by uh, four by fours. So 
this this is what's happening. Damage is being caused to the Nazca lines by these four by fours. In but these these lines that the four by fours are creating are lines themselves. Is part of the archaeology, and and every every nuance, every piece of history and archaeology is part of the history and archaeology of the future, which, alas, we would like to keep everything perfect, but we really can't. So what I'm going to, we're going to look at a few images and we're going to have a little bit of a sort of nice little bit of an explanation. Carl? Yeah, go on. What did we find in the entrance to the fort just above the effort of the doors? Um, ley lines. Ley lines, absolutely. Yeah, Pete, um, a ley line isn't necessarily isn't no isn't necessarily straight. Um, a, 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 is the, there the, a connection? That's all I'm saying. Yeah, there's there's a connection. That, that actually, Bill, you've actually Pete, you've actually used the word uh, the the word connection. Um, li lines are about connection. History is about connection. It's a web of connection. It's it, it's a it's a web of understanding. Yes, that, that was a that was a good place to put that, uh, Pete. So what we're going to do, um, do, you know, the Wikipedia thing on this is fine because you've you've got these really nice images. Um, and there you go, you've got this huge spider monkey. Now there's the back, um, and there's the spiral tail. The spy. Start again. The, the spiral tail. And to actually walk this spider monkey, you need to go up that line there and you need to follow all the spider monkey all the way around. You need to go all the way to the fingers and you're going to need to go all the way back. And then eventually you go all the way into the tail, blah, blah, blah. And this is this is what we're looking at. And again, some damage caused to the tail there as well. But again, this this is this is again all the sense of a processional route. And 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 one of the things put in here is this was in the pandemic and uh, this about a year and a half ago uh, i did the i did the archaeology of um san Gunoid, um and slimvy valley and my steg it was an evening i don't know if, I, I don't know if you were on that one bill but we, well, we did an hour and 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 at the end it was it somebody said about the idea that what you've got from san Gunoid all the way across, the, there's a pilgrim route going all the way to Penrhys, and then you've got a pilgrim route from Penrhys, then all the way over to Taft's Wells, and that type of thing. Yeah. Now it's not it's not exactly straight. You know, it isn't straight. It sort of it goes down swifts and turns, right? But again, again, that is that is a connection. That is a link. That is a route way. That is a pathway. That, that as we did last week, roads, pathways, and 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 all these. All these very important things that, that we mentioned uh, last week is all the same. It's all a passage of travel. It's uh, and again, um, it's all these these links and connections. So again, I, what I wanted to do is is I got you could we could do lots and lots of images. Um, and look at that there. Um, again, you're you're going down this processional route you keep going down the zigzag 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 and there's a hummingbird look at that but but you don't know it's a hummingbird when you're walking it it's it, it's a series of lines and that's what it is where, where there is a little curve on the end or whatever it's a series of lines and do, do you know what now now this is opening up lots of things that we could that we that very much link to the classes that we're doing with the mainstream archaeology Cymru and um, and the mainstream archaeology Cymru we're actually doing prehistory as you know but we will do cursus monuments and we will do bank barrows um, and we will do the avenue all of these all of these are processional routes the sense of travel the sense of movement and I can't remember what I can't remember who who quoted what what I'm just about to say and uh, there, there was an archaeologist who once said that um, the, the concept of time um, is to be seen in distance travelled. Time is a country that you can't get to 
but you do receive postcards from and postcards to occasionally. In other words, what we're saying, the concept of time is, is distance travelled. The concept of time is walking to Australia. Now, none of us can walk to Australia. Um, if you could walk to Australia, that would be a time machine. You would be able to go into the past, but you can't walk to Australia. I know, don't, don't, don't muck my head up with planes and boats and all the rest of it, but, the, but the, what we're talking about, but you do get postcards back from Australia. And what those postcards are is a little bit of evidence of this place that is in the distance, distance traveled, rather than the concept of time. And it, it, it's, uh, it's that sense of the line, line as well, the line, the, the alignment, the alignment of history. And, you know, it, it has been explored. Uh, it has been said that if you go up in a balloon, uh, you can see these. And if you look from some of the hillsides around, you, you can sort of see them. And what happens is it's, 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 um, it's a dark, um, um, vulcanized, uh, barren, bleak landscape. And what you do, you scratch the surface with with an adze or some other people over a thousand years ago. And what you do find is that that creates the shape and form of these. Now, archaeologists have, have, have been able to work out how you do the spiral designs of these, but that's not exactly a spiral, is it? And whoever's creating these has these little hand things like a like a humanoid and... Um, Oh, don't mention the A word. We're not going to spoil it. But again, these designs very, very unique. And uh, we're looking at like a, a monkey type creature there as well. You could say that the person who designed this could have got this right or wrong. But is there a right or a wrong? Um, and there's no there's no way into this. You've got to sort of step step onto it. And you've got to follow. And it actually, actually, folks, it's never ending because this is a never ending monkey-like creature. So you jump into it and you just like follow, 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 go around and around and around. And what we do see is lots of broken bits of pottery uh, as, as part of the procession. And um, it, it's, it's said as well that I, 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 they, 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 there's lots of research on this. It's, it's said as well that people would travel from a long distance with pottery, with a nice sort of piece of pot that they created and when they when they got to a certain point on this on this creature they would just chuck the pot on the ground and break it and you're thinking that's a that's a bit strange but then again no it's not it, it's a, it's a, it's the same as any votive association with anything pseudo-religious or ritual or whatever you want to call it right I don't like using the word religion you know i don't but when I've when I've ever I, I've been into a church and I've lit a candle and you 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 you're burning the you're burning the wax of the candle you're burning the tallow that, that's destructive so that's the same as breaking a pot you you might uh, for example we we see some votive swords broken and placed into lakes and rivers. Um, in Britain and other parts of the world in different periods in time. But the act of breaking is an act of, uh, of control, the act of ending, the act of completion, and it, it's, it's the same. So at the end of every journey, there is an end. But then again, when there's an end, there's a beginning. And this this is very much in 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 the sense of human consciousness it's you know i i was you know for, for example i I've, I've got i've got bits and pieces that i've been putting into the concrete for for the base of the, of the posts that i've been putting in the ground but but that's just like using the material to go on to stage two it, everything nothing is ever completely destructive and incomplete and look at that there 
this is, I think this is, um, I don't remember if this is like a tarantula-like creature, but a very odd creature. But again, the, these these lines, you can see that you're going on, going directly into the head. Uh, you, you've got this processional way into the head. And actually, all these other lines here, the, these lines here, that line there, that one there, and that line there, are, are different types of Nazca lines. And, and Naz the Nazca lines can actually be seen from space, naturally, through uh, aerial photography. And again, it, it's when you can simply, you can create the eyes here, yeah? You can work out how the eyes are created, but then you can't work out the, how they did anything else. And they didn't have dumpy levels. And if they had dumpy levels, there would be evidence of tripod markers. Mm -hmm. So they're doing all these things. But, you know, one, one way I've learned how to build, uh, when you've got slopes and everything's all over the place and you're thinking, right, there's only me and I'm trying to get levels and, and stuff, um, I just use line of sight. And I, I just, I, I might, I might use a marble to make sure something's something's level or um, what, what have you. But you learn how to do these things, and it's the same thing. These, right? That's the point. The the the, the people who created the Nazca lines learned how to do them. So we don't really have a right to say that they. How did they do them? Because they learned how to do them, like you and I would learn how to do them eventually. Um, except I just wouldn't really want to go out um, all the way to um, all the way to the Nazca lines with with this barren landscape um, with it being there, there's there's basically I think that there's 45 minutes of rain at the Nazca lines every year 45 minutes of rain that's it that's all the moisture is we not want to go there um, I, I, I like I like my rain I'm used to my rain and again, looking at this, very, very interesting there. You've got the main highway. It goes through the Nazca lines. Um, <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. And, and well, you can't make up, can you, Bill? Uh, the main highway goes to the Nazca lines. And uh, you've got this strange little creature on the, the left here. We're not actually doing Nazca line lines specifically today. We're doing the meaning of the line itself. So... Uh, you've got like um, a serpent type creature on the left there. And then you've got a lizard and the road goes directly through the lizard, which which loses the which loses the ability. You can't really follow this lizard creature. But there, there is there is something nuanceful here, i.e. the creation of the straight road. Right. The straight road is straight. Why is that road straight? Why does it need to be straight? Why can't it be curved? It, it's straight because of modern vehicles needing straight roads. Um, and but you can just travel and travel along this this length, and it just I actually actually um, I'm actually guessing I, I've no idea. I, I, I think that that tower there must be constructed so you can actually see this creature in the distance. That would make sense. It, it is the only way I can work out one out. Again, more of these spirals. Again, that spiral that we looked at earlier on. Uh, more of these Nazca lines from above space. Again, processional. And the the other the other thing as well is we know that people created them, right? Yeah, we know that people visited them and they they walked along the lines of broke pottery. So we know those two facts. We also know that the people the Nazca actually created these disappeared. So that's another fact. Again, that beautiful spider monkey, we've already seen that. And we're looking at this again. So what we're gonna do is I, I want to again there, there was a little there was a little map. Um there, there it is, there's the location of our Nazca line. Um so if we go there, beautiful Peru, there it is. Do you know, I, um, I I know we've all got we've all got re regrets in life, but uh, I, um, I I had an opportunity to go and see the Nazca lines and and Peru, and I had all I had all my rabies shots and um, um, everything, meningitis, um, 
everything. I had so many shots. I was walking, and um, and unfortunately, I chose to stay back because um, and I wish I'd I wish I'd have gone. I would I could have I could have seen these lines, and I um yeah, and um, and that's one big regret in my life that I didn't actually see them. However, what we're going to do now, I'm going to look at a little bit of text. I'm going to read through just to um, th fill out the information. We're going to look at Uffington Horse. Um, and then we, we can sort of have a um, little sort of discussion how all these sort of things are interlinked and interconnected. So let's just sort of get off that now. And I, I thought that was a, a nice little discussion to start off with tonight with, with the Roundhouse again. So let's just go into that. And let's sort of, okay, good. Just have to remember what I was doing then. Um, there we go. Right. So let's just, uh, my screen is a bit good. So the Nazca lines are petroglyphs, right? Um, uh, um, geoglyphs, petroglyphs. Um, my 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 daughter. I was sitting in the, the van with my daughter the other day, and she uh, she she was saying, "Do you know what the word Petra means?" And I just thought, blah, blah, blah. "Oh yeah." Um, and we were talking away, and yeah, petroglyphs. Um, something made out of stone or or, or rock. Um, you know, that's what pet petroglyphs. Uh, making it out of the ground, Petra ground. Uh, uh, geoglyphs, petroglyphs, and and what we do know is that they were well out and about uh, nine hundred years AD. We know, we we know that the the Nazca people were around around nine hundred years a, a, AD. But we think that these lines have been created as far back as two thousand five hundred years ago, and all they really are are, are depressions, as I've already said into the shallow, yes, desert floors. And basically removing whatever was on the top and what was on the top with, with the lines that they were creating would leave in contrast the, a light color in regards to the surrounding darkened landscape. So what, what we've got is that we, we know that there's quite a number of them but since 2020, a hundred new ones have been found. So they're actually still finding them. And the biggest problem is, is when you've got sort of people going out there in trucks and stuff, right, trying to find these, these lines, they might be destroying one of the um, geoglyphs, petroglyphs, whilst they're driving across the landscape, because we don't know where all these wonderful uh, sets of lines and creatures are most lines most lines that we do see are not just are, are not figurative they're just lines they're, they're just straight lines as we've seen earlier on sort of wide lines thin lines lines just sort of and I, I it was probably that people sat down one day and said I tell you what like you know that line that goes from there to there yeah it sort of goes up there and it goes up over the mountain it goes that way right mm -hmm. which is a good description of what an avenue is in a British context People then start thinking, well, why, why do we just like turn the line a little bit and sort of create a circle? And um, if we like create a circle, we can actually create some a figure or, or a shape or something. And that's that's what that's what we've got. So if you a, a cross, not length of the line, um, but across some of these panels of designs can be 400 metres across. Carl, so can I yeah, stop you? You get, you're not seeing any of the designs now. You're stuck on your um, central uh, picture. We, we're not talked into what you're showing us. What are you talking about? Oh, well, no, yeah. I'm just I'm, I'm just giving a description. I'm just I'm talking now. Okay, then. All right, so nothing, nothing to see then physically. Okay. Nothing to see at this moment. No, I'm just talking. Okay. No, it's okay. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. So, so lots lots of these designs that we think about can be actually 400 meters across so we're 400 meters across is is based twice the length of the platforming on cardiff central station 
but some of them can be up to a kilometre across. These designs over a kilometre in, in length, over a kilometre in length. So huge designs, not just of lines, but of figurative geoglyphs, huge geoglyphs. So these people are creating figures. They're, they're creating um, designs of monkeys. And they're, they're, oh, there's, even a, there's even a design of a whale. Right. One of them's of, of a whale, right? which is really odd because uh, it, you, you need to go a little, little bit inland to actually create these. The combined, the combined length of, of all the lines put together, um, which, which I, I actually think is a lot more than this. Uh, if, you, if you put all the lines and all the sort of little bits together, they believe that there's 800 miles of these lines. Um, but you know, I, I just, I just that doesn't sound enough to be honest with you. So, so the great landscape of these lines stretches over nineteen square miles. So it's quite a big, big area. And the what we what we've described is that to create these lines, like we're just going to see shortly with a and horse, the the lines themselves. Uh, being scoured into that sort of vulcanized sort of dark um, type soil. Um, the, the lines themselves are only, are only about four inches deep. So all that's happened is that the pebbles and stuff have, to a very, very shallow layer have, have been removed. And these designs, these designs, some of the older ones have been there for two and a half thousand years. <laughs> two and a half thousand years. So so what, 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 what we're finding is that um, you have a, a very darkened soil in, in some places on the surface. Some can be reddish brown, like an oxide coated pebbled landscape. But whatever you do is when you remove that, you've got contrast underneath creating the lines. Lots of the lines themselves, the lines themselves in the main to create the creatures that we're, we're looking at and no more than about 30 centimeters in width. So this is this is quite narrow. So the processional route for walking isn't a meter wide, is about 30 meters, 30, um, 30 meters, 30 centimeters wide, just 30 centimeters wide. So you're walking basically foot in front, foot in front, foot in front, foot in front, or, or you're two feet alongside each other very gently as you're walking. So now that's rather interesting. The, the lines themselves restrict your passage of access along the lines. You can imagine it's, it's like a, it's like going into a maze. It, it, when you go into a maze, you've got the, you, you've got the hedge on either side. We, we looked at mazes a few weeks ago. Uh, we looked at labyrinths actually. Now, but when you're walking along these lines, they're very restrictive. Some of the lines themselves are, are nearly two meters wide, but that, that's, the, that's the big, long, straight ones. So um, the lines themselves can be seen from, from, from the air. Um, some of them are visible from high ground, but most of them are on, on flat plains. Uh, lots of continuous lines. And because we've got a stable, dry, windless landscape in the main, and as I said, there's no more than about... Um, 45 minutes of rain a year and that's spread out over the year so the rain just sort of um the rain just gathers on the ground right it gathers on the ground mm. and uh, moisture gravel uh, gathers and then it, it, it evaporates so it doesn't destroy the line but unfortunately there's a there's a lot of damage being caused these days to the landscape by um by new roads, by um, people squatting on the landscape and so on and so on, which, which is a bit of a shame. So we, as I said at the beginning, we, we've got, you know, it was rather interesting to see that since um, 2020, uh, it, it's actually set up to a hundred of, of these, of these new, new designs within the landscape have been found. So we've got hundreds of them now. Um, not exactly sure how many we got, to be honest. So you've got hummingbird designs. You've got a few of them. We've got a few spiders. We've got fish. We've got a whale, condor, heron, monkey, lizard, dog, cat, even human designs and lots of other designs. And I believe you've got shapes of trees and flowers. Mm. So great. So even though this site is protected, obviously the concept of following that line um, is paramount. 
So what we're going to do now, I'm going to, we've, we've mentioned this here. And at this, this little juncture, as I get my other images on, and I can show a few of the Nazca lines. Has anyone got anything that they would like to comment on uh, with, with anything to do with these Nazca lines now? Yeah, it's something uh, that amazes me that the capital lines pretty well look straight. You know, so yeah. how they've managed to draw them that way without a, a cord down or something, I don't know. It makes you wonder. Yeah, but but the the one the one thing I did say the one thing I did say, Roger, right, is if we go to uh, lots of Google images, uh, we, we you 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 said about the straight line. Then um, one of the things I've been stressing was the sense of the line being curved as well. Um, so try trying to create these things goes against our logic, not against their logic. Right, and, and this this is this is a very important point. So if we if we say, for example, uh, not this one, bingo, Roger. Right, let let let's Roger. Just 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 put you on the spot. So you to to get to get to the hummingbird. Right, you you got to go down its beak and you've got to follow it. Right, um, there's not just lines there. There's curves. How do you create that, Rog? Well, it must be by measuring a distance along from a plan you've made before or something. Right. You know, because okay. if you're just dragging your abs along the ground or something to say, well, I think this is it, it, it I don't see how it does such a, well, what could say, an interesting, perfect picture almost. That, that is, do you know, do you know what? This is, that's it's really cartoon strange. like. Yeah. That's really cartoon like, isn't it? You're looking at that. Um, and and your uh, you you've got the the, the hot joint there, so, you, so you've got the, the joint there. That's really important. It's it's quite it's not just figurative. It, it's actually quite lifelike, actually. Yeah, when you but that. it's uh, producing that in that sort of uniform way, both sides of the feet and stuff. It's uh, takes a lot of planning in some way to get that drawn out. I would actually, agree. I would I would say trial and error. And I would no. say, if, if, you, if you look, Roger, if you look underneath that design, you can see other lines. So those lines existed 2,500 years ago. These, these are the more recent ones. When I say yeah, more, black lines. Yeah. these are no yeah. more than, these, these are about 1,200, 1,300 or, or, or so years old. How, so these, how do we know that, Carl? Go on. You're saying about the age, how would you know from analysing the, the rock and the effect of the sun on it, or something, or what? Ah, oh, no, the pottery. Um, it be, because because we can date the pottery, right? So the pottery is actually lying on top of the designs. So um, the pottery itself. Th this is where we get a. This is where we get the words um, terminus um, antiquem and terminus postquem, right? So the. Um, so terminus postquem is the earliest possible date, and terminus antiquem is uh, the latest possible date. Mm. So whatever the the, the pottery the, the pottery itself on top, if you get a date from when that pottery was created, i.e., uh, one thousand three hundred years ago, so that pottery itself postdates the design. So the design must be older than the pottery, particularly if the pottery pottery is really sharp and, and clean. This is how you can get right. an idea. And, and, and again, again, if, if this if this pottery's been, and the other thing as well is you might sort of assume that the the the, the designs themselves, if they look fairly fresh and there's pottery directly on top of it, it may be that the designs themselves, um, you know, it's all contemporary. And the other point as well is because there's so many these lines, right? This 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 is a very interesting thing. You're not going to go up to somebody and say, oh, I want to do the hummingbird this week. I want to do the whale. Right? To be honest with you, um, the people actually showing you where these were, you might they might not know what they are anyway. And actually, no, th this, this is a good point. This is one thing I've never thought. Uh, the, design, the person who designed these things may not have told anybody what they meant. I.e., you know, I've done a whale. 
Nobody knows what a whale looks like. I'm just not going to tell them it's a whale and they could just do a processional route. We don't know. But, but the one thing is, well, nor did the people know what these looked like who were walking them. We, we are the cats. We are the cats on the Persian rug. We don't know what they look like. They didn't have balloons that floated up in the air. And even if they did have balloons that floated up in the air, um, well, obviously they floated up in the air because they were balloons. But um, that's not going to help you. Um, yeah. That's not going to help you with the design either. But anyone else want to say anything before we do the effing yes. Yes, Carl. Each of these, the lines, with each of these figurines, figurine, whatever you like to call them, are never ending. The line yeah. is never ending. Yes. It comes back to itself and goes again. Yes, like this. And that's a concept which was <clears throat> almost um, from the from right through time. Universal, Pete. All yeah. over the place. Yeah. Um, when if, if if we take you if we take you to task there, Pete, I, I actually I actually said this at the beginning. Um, not not realizing that that would be the question from you mm. the the um everything everything is 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 never ending mm. and um and i i heard of, um I, I was listening again to bbc radio uh, two today the mp for um bexley and sidcup who died a few few months ago um he his wife him and his wife they they did everything together and um and he, he said to his wife just before he died, hours before he died, because he was still working as an MP hours before he died from lung cancer. He said, I just I, I, I don't want to be forgotten. I, I, I want to be remembered. And the reason I want to be remembered is I want people to be aware that you can get lung cancer like Roy Castle. Um, and I want that to be my memorial. And, and the point, the reason why I'm mentioning that is, is that these lines themselves are the memorial for the people who actually created these. The, these, these are, yeah. these represent, these, these lines powerfully represent the people that no, no longer with us, but they powerfully um, instrumentally offer us an understanding and a doorway into their lifestyle and their world. And that's 2,500 years ago. Um, and Peter, this is never ending because they're still there. Yeah. Um, and we're still talking. We're, we're still talking about it, Pete. Two thousand five hundred years after they were created, some somebody thousands of miles away talking to you on a computer is actually remembering, and we're discussing these. So the people actually created these. Um, they they have been immortalized, never ending, Pete. So in other yeah. words, I think that's the, 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 the thing about the line. The line is never ending. Yes. And the idea, Pete, is never ending because yeah. we've just done it. Yeah. We've just done it. Um, anyone else want to say anything else before we um, crack on to the Uffington? I just, just a word, Carl. I think um, because of the size of these, um, I would imagine, obviously, they've, they've used some sort of surveying techniques using poles and line of sights to get all the geometrical details so similar. Um <laughs> I'm glad you used metrics, but, geometric. But, yeah, but, but although it's extremely difficult looking at it, in modern times you've seen these sand motifs on beaches that people do, and they're yeah. brilliant. And again, they work it from the same principle at ground level. They can't actually see what they do until it's finished. So, yeah, the technique is there built into the human brain to do these things, as difficult as it is, but it can't be done. And I just wonder what the connection is as well between the different figures. We don't know that, do we? There's a big mystery to me. Always has been with the Nazca lines. Um, but, 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 uh, but, Bill, Bill, right? Um, does there need to be a connection? The, 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 the point is that the point is is that the people who originally created these lines and oh, and the other thing as well is somebody asked about dating, right? When you've got a Nazca line on top of a Nazca line, then the line on top of it seal some of the um, underlying context and that would be datable as well so so this is the nazca lines are, are self-prophesizing the patina of a later nazca line is is creating a sealed layer for a line underneath hence stratigraphy hence the idea of Fl flinders petri uh, seriation method where you've got different layers and different layers of development and you've got all these different things come into play mm. um 
and it, it's you know it, it is perpetual and um are there any links between any of these things why did there need to be in fact the only link that you guys have got with me is that you listen to me talking about archaeology right that is the link the link between these lines that they were created by the same people but they don't necessarily have to have the same meaning if they're being created over a thousand years the people who originally had the idea of creating these was probably had completely did completely different idea from what people were thinking about years later yeah it, 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 it does blow your head right okay good so what i'd like to do is i'd like to um, spend a tiny little bit of time looking at the Uffington horse, which we will come back to. Um, and we've got a lot of material when, when I mentioned about um, avenues and cursus monuments and ley lines and, and mazes and um, um, crosses that um, dot the landscape of Cornwall and how the endless line um, is perpetual, um, thanks to Pete there. So all, all these things do come into play. Let's just go over to the Uffington horse. Let, let's just give him a little bit or her, or whether it is a horse or not. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. And there we go. Now, are, are you all seeing my beautiful Leffington horse? Yeah. yeah. When I when I used to when I used to go to London to um, see my see my son Reuben, uh, I used to I used to look over on the right. Um, and I used to look in the distance and I used to see this horse and every, every time um, ev, 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 I'd, I'd always see, I'd always try and see the Effington horse in, in, when I was traveling in daylight in the dark, you'd never see it, but it was this little speck in the landscape from the train line. And I always used to see it. Now I could see the Effington horse. I, I knew it. I could see it. There was that intercourse of understanding. It was there. Right. So I could infer that it was a design of an animal, right? So this is very, very important. But when you actually do go to the Uffington horse, you, you, you've, you've got no idea it is a horse. In fact, just a little thing, is it a horse or a cat or something like that? But let's just not do this. It's, it's an animal, it's figurative, it's something, right? So, so you, um, the, 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 there is something that breaks the idea of the endless line here but there's no endless line it, it's all it's all broken up and distorted right but there's no way to say that all these lines were connected at one point in a time they just become disconnected a little bit um, it may have had a bigger belly and and you know and so on and a bigger thicker neck but you could actually you could actually sort of start at the tail and you could sort of wander around you could go down the back um, calf there and you could go all the way back belly and you could just follow this around and so on so you could have some kind kind of pres, pres, uh, processional route but what one of the one of the things with this one of the, one of the things with the the Uffington horse and lots of the other horses in Wiltshire um, is that further south it is that the, these horses are, used to be regularly scoured and regularly um, are basically scouring is to take away the, the grass and all the moss and so on and put a new la layer of chalk on there, rake, rake a new layer of chalk on it. Uh, and even that as an activity, raking and creating and the, the design and reinstating the design is, is all part of what this, this horse is about, what these horses are about, and quite a few others. Um, and you can see that there, different ways of showing it. But again, when you're there, you've got no idea what is there. This is what you're seeing. Um, and you go there and you just think, well, what, what is this? Is it, okay, there's, um, there's an eye type thing there, or is it an eye? Right. So you've got to look for a distance to be able to understand and see this. And, and white, horses, white horses and other figures within our landscape are to be seen from a distance, are to be understood from a distance. And again... Yes. Um, again, the, the, the idea of how they were created and why they were created, but how they, they are created is, is very important. And I've, I've heard, actually, actually, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think it may have been the Alton Bonds, 
uh, white horse. I'm not sure, but we've got a record of when that was being scoured um, because some of these white horses in Wiltshire are more uh, uh, are newer than obviously this one because the Uffington horse dates back 3,000 years. And they basically said, well, uh, while well, there'd be somebody saying, oh, right, you know, um, um, on a, um, from about a kilometre away, uh, with a flag saying, oh, but, you know, um, you've got to go a little bit further to the left because that's where you need to do it. And another flag going, you're going to need to go a little bit further over towards the right. And actually, this is a lot of faffing. What, what we need to think of is their way of doing these things. And, um, and you know, you get better and better at doing these things. And there's an instinct. And you've also got to... You've also got to think that when you when you look at the, the Nazca lines, these people were knew what they were doing and they had made many of them. Right. And why can't they have just thought, right, I know what a monkey looks like. I'm just going to create it uh, without any of the things that we mentioned, without line of sight, without any sense of geometry. Um, I know it's hard for us to grasp. Uh, we've all had cult cultured backgrounds, but I know it's hard for us to grasp, but people can do things and you, you don't really need a, a way of understanding how they're doing them. And, you know, it, 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 that, that's, that's a very important thing. We, we sometimes overanalyze these things. Um, and this, this, is, this is a little bit of a mound from a distance. This is all associated, I think, St. Um, George's Mound. Well, um, just nearby, um, and this is looking down within within the landscape. Again, looking away from the Uffington horse, you've got another concept, and you know we've got the idea that people actually, when we go back to the Nazca lines, you've got the idea of people walking a processional route. Um, um, may, maybe they could feel with their feet the way they were going and maybe they weren't looking down on the ground maybe they were looking up and around we don't know again looking down from the Uffington horse and again when you look at when you look at from different angles when you look at the Uffington horse from different angles sort of close by you can only see little bits of white chalk you can only sort of get an idea you can just sort of get a little taste and a little touch of it and nothing more and nothing less but again going back to this aerial view going back to looking down at the Uffington horse so what I'm going to do I'm going to um, I'm going to give us a few facts and figures I'm going to get off the image a few facts and figures and then after about three or four minutes we'll have to um, go on to questions and uh, some, sometimes when you're when you've got to uh, mm. when you've got when you've got limited time, none of the girls have, have joined us yet, so they they, they can wait. Um, they, they have not joined us, so that's fine. I think they're probably getting used to uh, um, sort of running over. So <laughs> they've had years of practice. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah, thanks, 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 Bill. So, when when we think about the Uffington horse, you know when I when we mentioned about lots of these designs mm. involved in the Nazca lines were like four hundred meters um, in length, and some of them may have been a thousand meters in length. Well, oh, the Uffington horse is only one hundred and ten meters long, <coughs> tail to to nose or beak, as they call it. Um, and all this is is basically creating digging out the 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 the, the sods of earth. And, and filling them with crushed white chalk. But we do know that the Uffington horse, the, the levels associated with the Uffington horse are fairly deep because it's been scoured on a very regular basis. And it's, it, it, it can be seen, it, it can be seen from the railway, the railway line. And, and the railway line is five miles away. And it's quite amazing that you can see this horse from five miles away, which which is absolutely a great achievement. It's um, it's basically more or less draped on the side of a hill, and we do believe that the Uffington horse dates back to at least three thousand years ago. Um, what what they basically did they they um, the beak. You now I mentioned the beak, the, that that thing at the the the, the um, you know, on the head that beak. Basically, in, two th in, in 1990, there was this great debate, right? 
Where's the Uffington horse created by Alfred the Great? So that, that would only be 1,200 years ago odd. Uh, was it created in the Roman period? Was it created in Iron Age? So what they did, um, they, they dug all the way to the, the, the base layer of, of the beak, right? Um, and what they did, they used a certain technique. And that technique um, is thermal luminescence dating. So what that, the way that works is they, they record the level of light radiated from that layer that's now being exposed to the sun for the first time in a hell of a length of a hell of a length of time they, it turned out that the the, the uffington horse particularly that bit was scoured up to 3380 odd years ago so it's an incredibly old creation um um it's a, it, it's it's amazing right um, and some of the some of the um some of the chalk itself has been dug into the hill. The ditches have been dug into the hill up to three feet deep. And there is one last thing um, that I would say, right? Yeah, in a book that um, a well-known um, English university um, has, has kept under lock and key, a couple of the pages have been read uh, referring to the Red Book of Hurricast. And the Red Book of Hurgest actually records the Uffington horse. And it says near to the town of um, Ab Abington, um, there is a mountain with a figure of a stallion upon it. And it is white. Nothing grows upon it. So we know that the horse itself, from, from a Welsh chronicler, um, tells us of the Uffington horse. And, and again, it's that sense of link, it's that sense of connection, broadcasting these horses across the landscape. Um, and um, the Uffington horse is in Oxfordshire, not, not like the other horses that are in Wiltshire. So what we're going to do, we're going to call that a day now. And um, again, we'll just, um, we'll, we'll just have a, a quick image of the Uffington horse uh, as we're talking, and we'll just have the beak up there. So... Uh, first of all, so any questions? Let's uh, Roger. Uh, any questions? We'll just show the Effington horse as we as you can ask any questions. Any questions, Roger? Anything you want to say? Oh, Nothing. Oh, that makes a change. Um, Stephen, anything you would like to say? Yeah, I, I, I'm struggling slightly. I can understand uh, with something like the Effington horse, where, where it's on a on a hillside and and they're. They, you can see that they are uh, the word you use is broadcast, but when you when you consider something like the Nazca lines, how did anyone ever see that um, the, those designs from the ground? I mean, we, we see them as aerial photographs to give you a sense yeah. of scale. so. So, how were they ever conceived and, and appreciated? Uh, may, maybe they were never meant to be appreciated. Um, you know. Like, okay, what we're doing, what you're doing, uh, what we're doing, we, we just, we just, we're just going into our own minds and thinking, right, wouldn't it have been great for our ancestors to be able to see the Uffington horse standing upon it? Wouldn't it have been great to, for our ancestors to stand upon the Nazca lines and work out that they're looking at a whale? Right? Wouldn't that have been absolutely brilliant, right? So what we're doing, we're using our modern day concepts to understand um, an ancient way of looking at things. And the ancient way of looking at things is not the same way that we look at them. Um, and it, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's some, some, some people say that some of the designs at Lascaux right, were painted and then the lights went out and nobody ever saw them again. What, um, and we think, well, that's a bit of a shame. Uh, there's, there's also examples in prehistory where people might carve on stones and the beautiful carvings are then placed facing into the mound so nobody ever sees them and you think well that's a bit daft but it's not daft it's it's not daft at all it's the way that they looked at things um all we're just putting a modern concept onto um an, an ancient thing and when we put a modern concept onto an ancient thing uh we're doomed not to understand or doomed not to understand the way that they would have understood things does that make sense it, it it does. Just I'm still I'm str still struggling slightly with the 
the concept of when it was conceived and when it was formed. Yeah. How did the creator or creators know when they finished? Ah, uh, right. It's 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 the same. It's the same with any anything to do with art, right? Most artists don't feel that they've they've completed any piece of artwork. If you if you look at the Mona Lisa, for example, that there, there's layer upon layer of designs um, involved in the Mona Lisa. Um, and when when we do look at something like the Mona Lisa, you, you know, it, it it's it's that concept of art. Art is never really seen to be completed. Right. Okay. So. Effectively, these Nazca lines would be just evolutionary. Then they, they are the next iteration, if you like, of something that's been there. Yes, it, it, it's it's an evolutionary thing. It's it's like anything. It's an evolutionary thing. Yes. They were drawn by aliens. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, directed by the Celts. <laughs> oh god! Oh, now you've really upset me. Now you've really upset me. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Right, um, right. Who, who, uh, can everyone bear with me a minute? Just 30 seconds. One, two. Hang on, 30 seconds. It's, uh, it's, it's, got, a, it's got a bit nippy in you. I'm just going to put the fire on a minute. Hang on. 30 seconds, guys. Right, okay. I have to put the fire on. Right, so, uh, Roger, um, have we done you anything you'd like to say? No, I was going to say, about my original thing about getting that shape that Steve was saying, like a, for me, it's like a surveying thing, measuring and eyeing up something somewhere. Yeah. Good surveying. Yeah. Uh, obviously, these people knew what they were doing, and that, that's what we've got to give them credit for. And, and sometimes there's, there's, no, there's no right nor reason <laughs> for how these things were created, you know? Mm. So, um, anyway, thanks for that, Rog. Um, Pete, anything you want to say? No, not really. Except that each of those figurines which were drawn, they obviously had a... Um, the, the, the people who drew them, it meant a lot to them to do that amount of work. Yes, and it... Yes, yes. God, it, it, it meant a lot to them, right? Yeah. But it, it doesn't... That, right, that's, that's the thing. If we want to look at it that way, right... It meant a lot to them, but um, uh, it may have been a secret thing. They, 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 they thought, well, we can do this. We know what it is, but um, I'm not going to tell anyone what it is. They, they've got control over the design. It's, it's like having a piece of artwork that nobody knows what it means, right? Mm. The artist knows what it means. Mm. Uh, can you uh, remember that Meat Loaf song? And he says, but I won't do that. Well, Meatloaf knew, but, but very few people knew what he was singing about. Right? So this, this is the thing. Um, we, we're asking... I will do anything but for love. Yeah, exactly. I won't do that. Exactly. Meatloaf. We have to put Meatloaf in there. Rest, rest, in, rest in peace. Yeah. But, but this is the thing. We, we want the answers, right? But we've got no right to have those answers. How dare us, because we're here... We think that there needs to be answers to everything. There doesn't need to be. And we are trying to look into the minds of the people who did, did the work. Mm. And, we're not, and we, we, we don't, they're not going to give us the answers because nope. they, they, they didn't give the answers to the people who actually they made them for anyway. Yeah. It's like magic. It's magic. That's what it is. Mm. So, uh, right. Anything you'd like to say, Bill, before we finish? <coughs> the, excuse me. The effort on horse. Um, the horse has always been worshipped um, by the ancient peoples and the most important animal from a point of view of transport and um, as a workhorse. And the effort in horse on the slope, I got a feeling it's um, east facing, uh, so it would have caught the um, morning sun. Yes. As a symbol of uh, daily worship, shall we say, if we're in the, sort of that sort of area of, of discussion. Or, um, or, daily, or daily understanding. And understanding, because wasn't wasn't the horse god uh, Eponimus? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so obviously the horse was so so very important to them. Why wouldn't they worship them? They didn't understand what uh, what life was all yeah. about to, to any great extent. So yeah, let's have a symbol to worship. You know, we think about the Mary Lloyd, and we think about the the, the coins themselves and everything that you mentioned about yeah. the animal being um, 
you know, we had a type of tapir, as we mentioned the other week, um, um, 7,000 years ago. But, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, um, uh, the horse is well, a Prowalski horse and, and all those types of horses are well in our consciousness of, of every, of, of most um, civilizations uh, within within Europe. Yeah, exactly. Even North America, the horse is everywhere. Without the horse, you know, uh, civilization would not have developed. Well, that's, that's why we have so many of them on hills, don't we? We have the Westbury ones. Yeah. And yeah. The, the African <coughs> ones. Yeah. They could, be, could be seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the, the thing is, right, the, the Germans would not have been able to invade um, Russia without the horse in uh, Operation Barbarossa. Most yeah. most German traction in the Second World War was the horse. Amazing yeah. enough, it was the tank. <coughs> it wouldn't have done anything. Like, well, the, the Rus war. Russians withdrew, taking all every all the food with them and destroying what was left. So as they advanced, they had no feed for their horses, and that's where they lost out on the war. Yeah. Yeah. Bingo! Yes, that that's one fact that people. Lost and I've lost hundreds of pounds on horses too. <laughs> yeah, shut up! Oh, I didn't think you were. A <laughs> Don't ever tell me that you gamble. Shut up! <laughs> Okay, um, last last word tonight. Uh, next week, you know what we're gonna do next week? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck us straight into um, avenues and curses monuments next week, and we'll do ley lines the following week after that. So, Richard, anything you'd like to say? Uh, no, no, I'm be satisfied with what's going on. Uh, you know, Richard, it's it's a shame that you don't um, cut that mustache to a little mustache in the middle and dye it. You look very, <laughs> you look very familiar. <laughs> I'm growing my hair and sweep it across. Actually, actually, you're looking a little bit like Gary Tiley now. <laughs> oh, don't ask, don't ask. Oh, oh, now he's upset them. Right, okay then. Uh, if there's you no need more to get out with Michelle's dowsing rods. Yes. Uh, definitely, definitely, and we need to look at those ley lines the following week. Yeah, fair enough. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Right, okay then. Well, if there's no more questions from Steve, Roger, Richard, Bill and Peter, this has been a blast tonight. Uh, really appreciate your support tonight and we'll see you all next week, okay? Yeah, okay. okay. Thanks, Carl. Bye. 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 Bye, girls. Bye, girls. Bye, girls. Bye, Bye. 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 So have you have you got everyone, uh, Jessica? No, I've just messaged Anne to see if she, but she hasn't been online um, for like twenty four minutes. So, I, if you've got a contact number, could you ring her, please? Uh, right, or, what, so, what or someone doing? else if they can get hold of her. Uh, what, what what I'm going to do? I, I'm going to uh, what I'll do? I'll end that recording now. So anyway, everybody, thanks for uh, my my look at um, the line today and the importance of the line being curved. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe over to Jess for the next do So uh, thank you very much. Good call.